Hi everyone that's interested in this sort of thing. Uh, this sort of thing being my overview and initial impression of the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31. Specifically, the one that I call the Canada One 31. Um, this is the first production direct order Sabenza 31 made for a Canadian. Um, there are probably a couple other Sabenza 31s in Canada. Um, one of the show 31s that was made for Blade Show in Atlanta last year, I think, is owned by a Canadian. Of course, there's a slight design difference um, between the show ones and the production ones. And the first batch of production ones was uh, sent to dealers. Um, so I think there may be a, one or two dealer ones in Canada. But this is the first one that was made for a customer direct order um, uh, Canadian um, by Chris Reeve and I happen to be the one that was lucky. There's no skill involved uh, that it came to me, but um, I'm happened to be a Chris Reeve fan and um, so I'm really happy to receive it and I'm a bit of a patriot. I served my country for 26 years as an infantry soldier. So um, I'm, I'm really, really uh, kind of chuffed to have the first Canadian um, um, uh, Ma uh, made for a Canadian uh, Sabenza 31. Um, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, so a little bit about how um, I do my videos or what I make videos for. I'm a storyteller, so I'm not a detailed knife reviewer. Um, I will not you know, give you weights and measures and analysis that you would expect from some of the detailed guys out there on the internet. I like to, when I collect things and I get something nice from my collection, I like to film a little video, tell a little story about how I got it. Um, so I can look back on it in a few years and remember what it was like, the, the thrill of receiving something new into my collection. Um, uh, but because this is a highly anticipated knife, uh, particularly in the Chris Reeve community, uh, I'm going to try and do my best to give uh, my first impressions and an overview. And I've made a bit of a, uh, uh, a checklist or some notes. So I try and cover everything that I want to and keep myself on track from not going off into too many tangents telling stories. Um, a little bit about the audience for this. So I'm going to share this with um, the Chris Reeve Knife groups, um, specific Chris Reeve uh, Chris Reeve knife groups online um, and with some more general groups of people that are interested in knives and gear. Um, so uh, there is going to be a spectrum of knowledge um, and I don't claim to be at the expert level and I'm not at the novice level. I'm somewhere in between. So, um, you know, you can judge for yourself your interest in this. Um, the other thing I will mention is that um, as far as uh, uh, comparison, um, and this will probably come up as I go through, I don't own a um, Sabenza 21 large that is um, uh, not uh, inlaid, like a plain one. Um, so I can't give a direct comparison with a large plane. Um, all my Sabenza 21s, these two, uh, are inlaid, uh, one with micarta and one with cocobolo wood. Um, and I have a Sabenza 25, uh, also inlaid. And I do own a Sabenza 21 large, which is also black micarta inlay. It arrived two weeks ago. It had an error and it's gone back to Chris Reeve for a correction. So, um, I plan on, uh, when that arrives, um, I will probably, um, a few weeks after, owning the Sabenza 31 and the large uh, 21, I will do another video with comparison. So if I miss anything in this video um, that you want to know about or you have a question about, um, comment and I'll try and answer or I'll take a note and I'll try and cover it in the next video I do about this, maybe in three or four weeks time. Um, also, I will be tagging some people in this video, mainly they're the people from the Chris Reeve groups online. Um, and if you are interested in what I mention uh, about them, you can search them out if you join those groups or if you're in those groups, you can look for their photos and comments about the Sabenza 31. Um, yeah, uh, so if you uh, are interested and um, don't mind a little bit of storytelling and not a detailed review, but my first impressions and overview of the knife, um, 
and you enjoy watching this type of video, sit back and enjoy. So um, let's get into it. Um, enough of the introduction. Uh, let me just move these things out of the way. Oh, I'll just mention quickly. Um, for the people, so I, I have these out just so I can use them for comparison. But the people that uh, really like these uh, Chris Reeve um, Fox Hanks, um, I love it. I'm not, of course, it's embroidered with my uh, my nickname, which is, of course, in the form of the Chris Reeve logo. But I'm really impressed with the quality of it. And I ordered another one. And everybody knows I'm, I'm a fan of this color scheme. Um, and uh, I'm impressed with the Fox Hank people. There's a reason why Chris Reeve probably chose them to, to do their custom Hanks. But I ordered another one. It just arrived, happened to arrive the day before my Savenza 31. They even come with a little birth card. Um, it smells like cedar and they even wrapped it. And, and the only reason I have this handy is because it just arrived. They even stamp it with your initials and stuff. So these, um, it's a it's a married couple that that hand make these and they obviously put attention to detail into it so um whether you have a chris reeve one or not um i would say if you're interested um you know pick one up because they're they're really good quality um anyway but let me move this stuff out of the way and uh let's get into the knife so um people are wondering about the order time and the lead time um I ordered this on the first day that they were available, which was June 7th. Um, now, there are a couple of guys, uh, specifically Will G and Alec, who ordered the same day, but they ordered right uh, when the um, Sabenza 31 went live, like at noon that day, um, and placed their orders right away. I ordered sort of 10 o'clock that night, and I knew from talking with Chris Reeve uh, Knives in the summertime, that the you know there was a ton of orders that first day and that it could be months before from when they begin production before people would start receiving them so i didn't expect this till july or june or july in 2020. um the fact that i i was part of the first production batch uh, surprised me um but in talking with will g and alec and sort of figuring things out um, the, the only ones that they've delivered so far are plain uh, handles, no inlays, no custom graphics, no, uh, um, you know, um, unique graphics, anything like that, except for the show pieces. But production wise, they've only delivered plain ones. And so I'm imagining that all those hundreds of orders on the first day, a lot of them are for Damascus blades. Uh, and I, I totally get it because that new uh, boomerang Damascus is pretty sweet looking. Um, and the wooden inlays or micarta inlaid. So I think uh, the, the reason why, even though I ordered later in the day, that first day, is because I ordered a plane. Um, so the wait was almost exactly uh, seven months. So we uh, ordered on the 7th of June. And um, it's funny um, that Chris Reeve actually put out a um, Instagram, which I printed here, on, on the 7th of January, showing that they had um, uh, direct order, customer order 31s in production. And uh, who knows? Um, the people that had their knives made on the 7th and 8th of January, uh, who knows, the handles of my knife and Will G's and Alex's knife might be, it might be in this photo. Um, but uh, so almost, um, you know, uh, seven months to the day. And then, you know, it took um, a few days to ship here. I whined about it because uh, it uh, they packaged it and it sat in Boise for a couple days. And then and then all of a sudden it grew uh, rocket legs and, and um, Thursday, between Wednesday and thir and Friday, it made it from Boise to San Francisco to Toronto to me. So, um, and for the Canadians, the people in the Canadian Knives and Gear group, you can uh, do a search for, for the uh, photo I posted on Friday um, if you're curious about the importing details. I don't want to go into that in the, in the um, video. So enough gabbing. Uh, about the background and let's have a look um, at, at the actual product. So the box, no difference um, than before. Um, you know, the box that Chris Reeve has been using since, um, you know, late uh, 2016, or early 2017 um, for their knives. Um, and uh, uh, the folder uh, with the information is um, the same design folder. They haven't changed it for 2020. It's um, the 2019 version. And my uh, small Sabenza 
uh, 21, which was made uh, a month ago or two months ago yesterday. It was made on November uh, 18th and today's January 19th uh, came with the exact same uh, folder. So th there's not an update for 2020 yet. Um, your standard sticker and um, registration, warranty registration card, which you know, you can go online to Chris Reeve Knives and register there. Um, the birth card, um, I was a bit surprised. I'm going to tell a bit of a story here. But um, so this first batch, I know that Will G's uh, was made on the 7th. And his it happened to be his birthday. So happy birthday, Will G. It's only, you know, a week and a half ago. Um, but he, his came uh, with his birthday. And for me, January 7th is a significant date because it's one year from when I quit smoking, which is a bad habit and uh, costs a lot of money. And part of my quit plan, um, I, I didn't, uh, I don't wanna make a video about why I quit or how I quit smoking, but part of the plan was I did some math on how much money I spent on that bad habit. And that's why I got uh, sort of into rewarding myself. Part of quitting is um, at when you reach milestones is rewarding yourself. And that's why I ordered my sort of long dreamt about um, everyday carry, which is the small Sebenza black micarta in single blade. And I ordered it um, once I had been, I had quit for long enough to save the money that would pay for this. And I knew it would take a while to arrive, but it was my reward for me reading that milestone. Like I mentioned, this Sebenza 31, uh, I did not expect till this coming summer. I didn't expect to get it now, but the fact that it came the day after uh, my one year anniversary of quitting, um, I am considering this not only the Canada one, uh, Sabenza 31, but it's my reward for, for having quit that bad habit for a year. And I do say to people uh, in the general community that say, oh, how can you spend so much money for a knife? Well, if you have a bad habit, and you go look at your bank account history and figure out how much money you spend on that. Um, it doesn't take a long time to save for something like this. Uh, I could have bought uh, a lot of Sabenzas, a lot of Chris Reeve knives with the money I've saved from giving up that habit. Um, but it's everybody's own thing. So, um, so anyway, I, it would have been cool if this was the seventh, cause that is the exact uh, anniversary, but heck one day off, I'm not going to complain. Um, so, and the guarantee, I mean, is the same, the card is, is the same design, uh, as they were using for the, the 21s. The, the one change in the documentation is in the, uh, the specific fact card for the knife. Um, my, uh, 21 in single came with the, um, you know, the card that has the description that says the standard, uh, the Sabenza 21, the standard. The new Sabenza 31, uh, I like this new uh, font and style that they've, they've started using. Um, but it comes with this isometric exploded view, which is pretty cool. Um, I like that. Um, if you don't have one of the... Uh, the takedown mats, uh, this one's for the 21, but um, you have one right in the package. Um, and uh, it's a good reference because there, there is, like I said, there's a bit of a design difference with the, the 21. Um, the, the back has the care notes, which are similar to the ones that come with the Chris Reeve fixed blade um, uh, with a little bit of uh, modification flying uh, that applies to a uh, folder. Um, so um, that's the paperwork. Um, I'm sure you, you're, you're all excited that I've been talking for uh, a good probably 15 minutes and I haven't even shown you the knife yet. So enough about that. The stuff in the box is the same as before. Um, so obviously I've had this thing for about, uh, well, in another hour or two, it'll be 48 hours. Um, but uh, the stuff you get in the box is the same as you would get with a 21, but I, I put it back into um, Chris Reed burrito form just to, uh, even though this isn't the first time I've unboxed it, um, just so you can see how it arrived. Um, so let's, let's get to it. Uh, I'm just going to have a little glance at my, um, 
uh, notes to make sure I haven't missed anything I wanted to talk about up to this point. Yeah, so I'm going to go through sort of piece by piece um, uh, and give you my overview and first impressions at the same time. Um, one other thing I want to note is um, that I cannot see uh, through my viewfinder of my camera. So I'm doing my best to hold things up, center them. Uh, I've lined things up. I've, uh, uh, so uh, I apologize if you don't get a good view or I screw up. That's my fault. Um, but let's, let's have a look through it. So the first thing I, I always notice when I get a new Chris Reeve, um, and I also should note, I don't have a dealer in uh, Ottawa, in Canada's national capital, there isn't a dealer that sells Chris Reeve knives. So every Chris Reeve I've ever touched has been one that I've owned. And the first time I've ever handled it is when it arrived to me by mail. Um, so I don't have ever have a chance to test things out. And of course, the 31s, um, they're in, um, you know, just beginning production. So not a lot of people have handled these anyway. Um, so, uh, aside from having, uh, fooled around with this for the last day and a half, um, you know, uh, that's the level of expertise I bring to this specific, uh, model. Um, but the first thing I notice when I get a new Chris Ryu knife, uh, is the sandblasting and how, uh, how just crispy good it looks. Um, I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm smiling because, uh, I think it was David, um, that, um, uh, Chris is pizza last night. Uh, one of the Chris Reeve, um, uh, group, uh, fellows, uh, <laughs> and he had, a, he has a 31 and, uh, I was saying, well, you know, your pizza looks crispy, but so does that sandblast. And there's something just satisfying about that new freshly sandblasted handle. Um, and if you look at the, the one I've had in my hands, uh, now for two months, um, they're pretty similar. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised that this one hasn't smoothed out more. This one, the 31 is actually, came a little less uh, rough than the 21, but it just might be the amount of time they've been using the sand in, in the sand blaster. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think there is a variation um, over months of production. Some months they come out a bit rougher, some a bit smoother, but it still has a little bit of sparkle, uh, which I always like with the freshly sand blasted. And you have to appreciate it um, because uh, as you use it, it, it does wear and it gets smoother. Um, yeah, so these handles are uh, uh, D19 handles. So they were made in the fourth quarter of 2019. Um, the main difference, of course, that everybody notices of the Sebenza 31 right off the bat is the lack of the positioning hole, uh, for machining, um, that you now have the completely, uh, blank, uh, um, scale, well, not scale, but handle. Um, so, um, how do I feel about that? Um, I'm a bit ambivalent. I think because all the 21s I order or I own are inlaid, um, I don't really notice the hole. It just sort of fits with the design. And for me, um, when I hold it, uh, I mean, my finger, I, I mean, uh, my smalls, at least, um, my fingers drop right into the middle of the inlay and my baby finger kind of hits the hole. So it's actually kind of how I position my hand when I'm holding it and using it. Um, so I don't really notice, but I think if I had a blank plain uh, Sebenza 21 with the hole sitting there, it might look a little out of place. Although there is a certain symmetry between um, the pivot screw, um, the stop pin screw and the, the body screws, um, if the hole is there. Um, so, um, and I think there's also a similarity with, of course, the, uh, Encosis, um, which have, if you get a plain Encosi, you have the, the complete blank scale, uh, scale. Um, so I can't really comment on whether I miss it or not. I think it does look very clean and neat like this. Um, and, uh, uh that's, um, sort of the, consensus I've been hearing from the Chris Reeve community. Um, I think um, for the inlaid ones, I will be interested to see. I don't know if I will end up getting an inlaid one. Um, I would classify myself as a user collector as opposed to a put it on the shelf and admire collector 
or a investment collector. So um, I intend to use all my Chris Ryu knives and I already have a small uh, 21 to use with inlays and I, I as I explained I have the large 21 with inlays so will I will I need a 31 with inlays I don't know um, maybe I'll get a wood a fancy one for um, you know special occasions with a nice uh, wood inlay and a Damascus I don't own a Damascus yet so that's a possibility but um, uh, I the thing I appreciate about inlays and why I've ordered with inlays is I like the fact that my fingers fit into that groove both on the 21 and on my 25 and uh, my large 21 that's coming um, it just gives me that little bit of extra grip um, so will the flat inlays change that I don't know I can't comment but I think the lack of the hole and the new uh, on the handle um, will have an interesting effect on the unique graphics or computer generated graphics um, models that they come out with because um, it gives them space for more creativity um, for example like a lot of the the ones that have a, a cabochon uh, it, uh, put into the handle um, they use the machining hole uh, alignment hole to put the that uh, gemstone um, in now they don't have to be um, limited by putting it in that spot they can put it anywhere on the handle if they want um, of course again there's the you know maybe they want to put it there for the symmetry with the screws but um, it's just my thought uh, um, so um, as far as the feel of it though I mean my first experience with any plain handled Sebenza or any plain handled Chris Reeve um, for that matter other than the tie lock which is polished so it's a different different case I actually think the sandblasted titanium is more grippy than micarta at least for the mine I find um, that if I if I sort of slide my fingers on the micarta it's actually a little less friction than on the titanium now again this is brand spanking new i mean this knife was manufactured um 11 days ago and has only been in a user's hands for for you know almost about 48 hours so as it wears and smooths out um that may change um maybe i'll, I'll update you on that in a month um the other thing and i i, I don't think this is uh, unique to the um sabenza 31 but my thought on um, having the blank scale, I don't know if I'd be, I, I said I'm a user collector. I think until I get that first scratch or that first ding, or as you know, they call it snail trail or my engineering ring makes a, a, a dent or a, a scrape, um, I think I'm gonna be a little bit careful because it has that sort of very pristine crisp look. And, um, there may be some reluctance on uh, my part uh, to damage it. The other thing is when you invest um, the amount of money that it costs to buy a Chris Reeve, I think there is a period of sort of babying and care, being careful until sort of the, the financial outlay uh, is far enough in the past that you've sort of numb to it and that you've, um, you get that first ding or two and then, then you start using it uh, in earnest. And I would say like with my... My small uh, Insingo 21, um, you know, I'm still not at the stage where I'm using it really hard yet. Uh, uh, although, I, you know, I'm opening and closing it and, and, and uh, carrying it in my pocket every day. I've carried this in my pocket every day, except for yesterday where I carried this because I wanted to test it out. Um, so I think that covers the handles for now. Uh, let me talk about the second most obvious feature is the clip. Um, so I have a bit of a split, um, feeling about this. Uh, my thought on the clip initially was, okay, well, maybe it helps act as a, a stop for the lock bar, or I, I don't think it's strong enough to be actually a stop for it, but maybe limits the, the, um, over travel of the lock bar. Um, but I don't, I don't know if that's why they designed it that way. And I know the uh, Incosis um, have this design. I don't have an Incosi, I have a 25, which has the 
clip running along the lock bar. And I think the the other argument is they don't want the, the clip pressing on the lock bar. The lock bar has its own pressure and it doesn't need the extra pressure of the, the pocket clip. Um, so as far as the, the utility of the clip for carrying the knife, I think it's great. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, with my small 21, when I put it in, the po in my pocket, if I pretend my hand here is my pocket, and the web of my uh, thumb here is the seam. I like to carry my knife right into the seam of my pocket. And when I do that with this knife, it tends to ride out. Uh, the, I can't get the clip to stay right next to the edge of the pocket on the seam. And um, so it's on an angle like that. So I thought that with this angle al angled already, if it's gonna naturally sit on that angle in my pocket, um, it's gonna force the knife into the seam and I carried it yesterday and that's exactly what it did. So I was like really happy with the way this felt in my pocket. Um, then I carried it, I put it in my hand as it, to use it though. And it, it uh, rubs on my hand down here and I'm not a fan of that. Um, with my small 21, uh, and I showed this in the video when I unboxed this. The 21 fits my hand perfectly. Um, that's why I love it for everyday use. My fingers fit into the bend at the end of the clip and the little dent in the clip. Um, and my, even my baby finger um, fits just after the end of the clip. Um, and the thing is, it's, it's fitting right into the uh, joint of my fingers with my hand. Um, so it's comfortable. Um, same thing with the larger one where basically your clip is sort of one finger down. So if I look on my 25, it's going, my ring finger fits into that bend in the clip and the baby finger is going into the dent. Um, but again, the clip is, is in the joint uh, when I'm using it. With the 20, or sorry, with the 31, it doesn't fit that way. And I could try and position it there, but it's like, it's a forcing it um, to do that. And then the front of my hand doesn't fit right. If I, if I naturally sort of grasp it where your fingers are supposed to go in the grooves, this is sitting, digging into the meat of my hand here. And I don't think that's a problem if I'm, you know, slicing a tomato or something, but if I'm doing harder use and I'm doing it for a long period of time, that could get irritating. So like I said, I have mixed feelings about this clip. Um, I think it's perfect. I love it in the pocket, but in the hand, not so much. Um, what's my solution? I don't know. I might try a Hawk clip, um, which I have. Uh, I have one, uh, I might try it on there. Or I might, um, I don't know, I, I could actually remove the clip and just um, put a filler in there uh, and carry it in my pocket uh, in a slip or something. But that kind of defeats the po purpose of having it with a, with a lanyard in your pocket. And, uh, and I just love the way that this carries in the pocket with the clip. So I'm gonna have to make up my mind about how I'm gonna carry it when I carry it. But that's my initial impression of the clip. Um, Next thing, and I th I'm sure you've all noticed by now. Okay, so I have uh, blue thumb lugs. Now, uh, uh, I've seen uh, Will G has the silver um, and loves the silver. Uh, I think I've seen one other person has the silver. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Um, and then Omar, uh, who I think he bought Garrett's um, 31, that one has gold. So it, uh, these these people will be tagged uh, when I post this video in the groups. So if you want to see photos of what the 31 looks like with the silver uh, lugs or silver hardware or the gold hardware, there are uh, production, customer production, Sabenza 31's out there with those different color schemes. Um, so you can go and check out their photos. Um, but I think anyone that does uh, know me from the groups knows that I am um, sort of a bit passionate about the blue and silver combo. I was posting pictures the other day with my fountain pen, uh, you know, the Pelican M805, and 805 comes with rhodium colored trim as opposed to gold trim which i think goes well with the blue and i was just comparing how well 
uh, while I nearly stabbed myself, um, but how the, the, the blue matches the thumb lugs. And actually I was matching it with, with the worn th uh, thumb lugs. Um, and if you're curious, so this, this knife has been in my hands. It was made two months ago yesterday, uh, been in my hands for, um, a week less than that. Um, but that's, that's, uh, a month or two, I'm sorry, um, seven weeks of wear on the thumb lugs. And I mean, I sit around flipping this open and shut, uh, well, not flipping, but, uh, you know, opening and shutting this, um, quite a bit because I'm just, I love this. This is my favorite. Uh, I have to be honest. Um, so that's, that's two months worth of wear, um, with me fiddling with it every day. And that, there's, that's a comparison to the brand new. Um, but I mean, I don't think I have much more to say about the lugs other than that's what the blue ones look like. They're the same lugs that you'll get on a 21 or you, you would have had on a 21. And if you want to see what the other colors uh, of hardware look like, you can online. And I, I being a bit OCD, I, I like to get uh, the double lugs uh, just for balance. Um, so uh, I've talked about, you know, everything but the most important part of a knife, which is the blade. Um, and I guess because the biggest changes are uh, more cosmetic to the user um, uh, when you first take it out of the box. But also the blade, um, there is really no change in the blade uh, from the uh, Sebenza 21 to the 31. Um, except inside of course there will be they've changed the um the hole that the detent ball fits into because you have the new um ceramic ball uh which is also the lock uh interface uh that behaves as the detent um so they've had to change that and i i until i get my large um Sebenza 21 uh, in another week or two, I can't comp compare the back of the blade tang uh, and the lock surface uh, with the large 21. But comparing it with my small 21s, uh, both my uh, Insingo and my Clip Point, um, I don't think that they have changed that um, at all. Um, the change is, is with the lock that, that hits the base of that tang um one thing i did notice when i had my large 21 in my hands just for a few hours before I, I sent it back to be corrected and one thing i didn't know until i got my small and single is that i like the fine finer uh jimping on, on the in single i did not know having owned this um, small 21 for years, um, that the, this wasn't the standard jimping. The jimping on a small Sebenza 21 is spaced further apart. The, the ridges, there are, there are 13 ridges, uh, on this, which, I mean, it's, it's a bit smoother than on the Insingo, which has, um, pointier ridges because there are 15 instead of 13 in the same amount of space. So they're, they're thinner, uh, sharper and grip your th your thumb more, and uh, I'm pleased to see that the 31 has sort of sharper jimping, similar to my small in single 21. Um, so I think that's um, yeah, that's all I can say about the actual blade shape. Um, but let's talk about sort of the lock interface. So I mean, um, so that's a natural progression. So um, I do find that with the um, the lockup, it's it's actually breaking in a little bit better today. But there was a little bit of stick on the lock with the ceramic ball hitting the blade, and I I'm I'm unable to say if uh, because it's been um, three and a half years since I bought my twenty five, which is the only other knife I have with the ceramic ball interface. But it's not as smooth as my twenty five. But this one is broken in. Um, this one, like I said, uh, uh, roughly coming up on 48 hours that I've owned it. And when I first, uh, when it's open and I first break the lock, uh, um, interface to close it, there is a teeny bit of stick. And I don't know if, uh, I don't think there's any, uh, lubricant that's on 
uh, the lock face um, or the lock interface. Uh, I think it's a matter of the ceramic ball. And I was talking a little bit uh, with Alec uh, yesterday um, about some lockup stuff. Uh, or he had a post about breaking in. And um, I think it's just that it, it needs to wear its groove. Because if you look on the 25, which is, you know, this one's three and a half years old, you can see that there is a worn in spot where my ceramic ball interface uh, hits. Um, so I, I think that will smooth out in very short order. But it is an observation I have uh, off the bat. Um, Aside from that, the pivot feels great. I mean, it's, it, it swings just as smoothly as the, the um, two-month-old um, 21. Um, I made a mention um, that when I got this 21, the first day, I didn't do it on video, but right after I filmed my video, I pressed the lock bar and it slowly dropped uh, like it was a pneumatic... Um, um, piston. Um, it is, I have not modified this at all, but it now drops freely just from, from use and breaking in. Um, but I, I tested the 31 like that, um, when I was, had my failed first video and you can see, uh, see it's dropping more now than it was on Friday, just two days ago. Friday, it sort of slowly moved down to about there. Now it seems to, well, yeah, let's, let's try again. Yeah, so it's coming down, you know, three quarters of the way. Um, but I think um, the production at Chris Reeves has uh, improved, if that's even possible. But when I received my first Chris Reeve, um, which was the small 21 drop point, um, this one was a lot rougher when I first received it. Um, there was a lot of lock stick, but there was also the blade was a little bit crunchy. Um, and both of these have come out of the box um, so smooth. Uh, really impressed uh, with that. Um, now, the, the actual lock strength, I mean, you know, there's no blade play whatsoever. Um, how does the ceramic ball interface compare with the uh yeah, almost sliced myself there too but how does it compare with the 21 i mean they're different uh designs but they do just uh as well of a job i mean they do what they're supposed to do i think the main difference um to me is the feel of it and people talk about um like a safe like lockup or a um yeah, like a solid lockup. Um, this has this sort of kachunk, the two two uh, clicks. One as the the detent ball leaves the tang. There, you could hear it there. And then the second one when the lock bar engages. Whereas the 31, you just get the one chunk. So you have a kachunk or a chunk. Maybe this one's more fun if you're going to play with your knife and open it and close it, you have that sort of, it has a little bit more spice to it. Um, but this feels solid. Um, and if I compare it to my other ceramic ball, uh, lock interface knife, the 25, I mean, they feel very similar. Um, uh, maybe, I don't know if one makes no more noise than the other. I mean, the 25 does have a thicker blade. But I think it also depends on how you hold your hand behind the handle. If you make an echo chamber behind it, you can make a big, loud clunk like I just did there. Um, but I have no complaint. Um, as far as lockup goes, this one is looking at about 75 or 80%. But um, it's the blade that will wear, not the ceramic ball. And um, I'm, you know, I'm so confident in the uh, Chris Reeve manufacturing that... Uh, I'm, I'm not thinking that that's going to budge at all. Um, yeah. Um, do I have anything to say with, uh, anything else to say about the la the blade? Um, not really. I mean, uh, I think as far as, as far as I'm concerned, the lock is, is just a different design and it does a job just as well. Um, um, uh, which one's better? I don't have a preference. Maybe this one's more fun to play with. Um, as far as functionality, they're both just as useful. useful. Um, 
you know, um, I think if, if, if you were to design, design your, especially if people that own several Chris Reeve knives, if you would design your favorite Chris Reeve, you'd probably take elements of one and the other. Um, the, the big thing I like, uh, uh, different is the pivot here, um, that it has the, the pivot bushing as opposed to the 25 and I don't own, uh, uh, an Encosi, but, um, the fact that this has the ceramic ball interface and the pivot bushing, uh, because um, this blade is perfectly centered. It's probably, I mean, my small 21 here is pretty pretty close to perfect, um, but this is the most perfectly centered Sabenza or Chris Reeve knife that I own. My 25, I have never been able to get it perfectly centered. Um, it's always pushed towards the front handle by the lock bar and um no amount of tightening or loosing will bring it uh to uh to the lock bar handle side of center the i can get it very close to center but then it's super super tight and you can barely open the knife um so i mean does it you know it's an aesthetic thing, though. It doesn't interfere with the performance of the knife or the use of the knife, but it's an aesthetic thing. Um, and like I said, I've tried, you know, I've tried every little increment on these screws and I've never been able to get it perfectly centered. So being an OCD guy, I love this, that I get the ceramic ball uh, lock interface and a perfectly centered blade and it's gonna center perfectly every time because of the pivot bushing in there. Um, the next thing I should mention, though, is if we're going to be going from front to back on the on the knife, is the stop pin, and this has been a bit of an uh, an item of conversation. Um, so the 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 Savenza thirty ones that were made for Blade Show, the when they launched the knife, had the same uh, stop pin uh, as the twenty ones, um, which is um, you know, the sleeve that goes around the Chicago screw. Um, and it had a flat spot on it. Um, and I know, I only know this from conversation. Uh, I haven't handled it, but, um, so, uh, what they've done for the production Sabenza 31s is there's, and you will see it. I should have kept the little diagram out. Well, it's going to be a little bit too small for you to see, but, but there's a difference between the uh, body screws and um, so the, the body screw, the pivot screw and the, the um, stop pin screw. The stop pin screws are shorter because the stop pin is actually an independent piece. It's no longer a sleeve. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's basically uh, a pin with shoulders that fit into the holes in the handles. Um, and then the screws go in from either side. So these screws are shorter than the body screws and the pivot screws uh, so that they don't hit each other inside that pin. Um, and what, just the one difference I notice is that, I mean, because this is a new piece, maybe, I don't know, but um, you can just look at the finish on it. It's not as shiny as um, on the 25 or the 21. Um, who really cares? It's inside the knife. Um, I mean, you know, it's just something I noticed is that it's a little bit more gray. And I've noticed that in uh, or a little bit more matte uh, as opposed to polished uh, look. Uh, and I've noticed that in some of the photos I've seen online. Um, if you are curious as to what this looks inside, uh, Alex, uh, Alex Sean took a really good picture yesterday uh, in the Chris Reeve um, group on Facebook. Uh, and you can have a look with the front handle removed and see, um, and the front handle and the blade removed. And you can see what the lock side looks like, um, the front of the, of, the, of the lock side looks like and see um, that pivot pin or, uh, yeah, that pivot pin and how it fits in there. Um, why, why that design choice? We were speculating. Um, we don't know. Uh, I, we couldn't figure out the reason. Um, I'm probably going to feel really stupid when someone does tell me the reason. I know, um, on the, the show, 31s they use the same pivot as the 21s but with a flat spot um 
uh, so why they had to put a flat spot um, and then switch to um, this new style of pin, I don't know. I know on the 25 there's a flat spot and that's because of blade clearance. Um, so I don't know if, uh, but it's it's a bit of a pain when you take apart the knife to, to line it up. So um, I, I think I'm happy about the fact that I, I won't have to be worrying about lining up this pin perfectly when I take apart the knife. But the reason for the change, um, I don't know. I'll be curious to hear um, if anyone figures it out. Um, Next thing I'll talk about is the lanyard pin. Um, and uh, there's not really, I mean, a difference. It's the same pin as on the 21. They have chamfered the handle around where the pin goes. Uh, the, they did that on the 25. I don't have a, a lanyard in, but you can see that they've cham the, the handles are chamfered for the lanyard to swing. Um, the 21... Uh, doesn't have that they're just flat at the back there um, so the 31 they've chamfered it so your your lanyard can swing a little bit more freely um, but one thing I'll note uh, if you look in this light um, maybe you can see um, and this is just a batch of pins um, there was a uh, mark um, one of the guys in the Chris Reeve groups posted in December his new knife and he, he was like is my is my hardware purple and uh, I thought, oh, he had a photo and he had his computer mouse in the background, which was purple. And I thought, oh, it's just picking up light from that. Um, and there was a big discussion. And um, apparently there's a batch of, of uh, stop pins um, that have a little bit of a purple hue. And I don't know if you can see now in daylight, um, the sun is actually coming out, which is nice because we had a big snowstorm. But um, but in cloudier light, there is a purple hue to this um lanyard pin and at night under incandescent light it looks really purple um so um you know and i always the other thing i'll say i mean this is always a testament to the precision work that the guys at um chris reeve do and i'll, I'll just shout out cj carrie and dean um the three that i know of um that work at uh um chris reeve and and do this this marvelous work is when you move your lanyard I mean, can you tell, can you tell that that pin is moving? It looks perfectly stationary to me. And that's precision machining. I always marvel at that. That's incredible to me, um, that, that sort of precision. Um, but yeah, so uh, I said to Mark yesterday, I'm a believer. Yep, it is real purple. I've seen it for myself. Um, uh, now, um, I said I would talk a bit more about the Canada 131 thing. I plan on actually... Um, uh, taking out this lanyard and pin and putting a uh, red and white lanyard for Canada. And um, <laughs> uh, Will, uh, Will Jekyll does not know this, but I, because uh, I have two of his spacers, back spacers on order. Um, they're in the mail right now and they're sandblasted and they're for my small 21 in Singo and the large big brother to that knife. And I have a whole other name and theme that's going to go with those. Um, stay tuned for that. But um, so this, um, he doesn't know. I got this last summer from Joey through, from Hellacious Blades. And he actually made the lanyard for me. And I'm sorry, Joey, because uh, I know you said you struggle with these knots. But um, I initially intended this to go with the large big brother of this knife. But... Um, now I'm going to repurpose it and put my Canada lanyard on this. And for those that are curious about the Jekyll to Hyde design back spacers or have, may not have seen them before, um, they will fit in the 31, um, because, uh, Salim, uh, had a picture of one of the show 31s that he has one of these on. And there was a post about, yes, they fit and work. So, um, so my plan is. I will be taking that out and putting putting this in with a Canada themed lanyard. Um, uh, and actually, um, the that's the one thing that happened with this is that they delivered it not with the when I ordered this in June. I ordered it with a, a midnight blue lanyard, and they, it came with the standard black. So I'll be calling them tomorrow just to 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 I'm, I'm not going to send it back or or ask them to send a replacement i'm actually um i i'm just going to ask them for a bead or something like that uh um but that's uh you know 
I actually have no complaint. Um, I, I, like I said, I was, I was just shocked to be in the first batch. Um, okay. So, uh, let's talk about, uh, ergonomics. Um, cause that was the other big change that they mentioned when they launched it. Now in looking, comparing with the 21 in the chamfering on the back and the front of the handle, or so the what I consider the back, the bottom top sides of the handle, the chamfering around and the shape of the knife is, is the same as far as I can tell. When they talk about the ergonomic differences, I think they're referring specifically to one thing and that's around where your fingers go. Um, and what they've done is this chamfer here uh, has a, a little bit more depth to it when you get to the center. Um, so it's a little bit deeper. Um, oh, sorry, I don't think it's deeper. I think the, the actual dimension of it is about the same. And I said, I'll have a better look when I get my large 21, uh, when I get it back. But um, but it's got more of a, of a contour to it. And then the big thing is on the lock bar. And you can see when you compare it to the small, the lock bar is chamfered and tapered in, but there's a bit of flat surface on the top, on the 21, whereas the 31, the chamfers meet in a point. It's not sharp, but it it's um, it, it is meeting in the middle there. Now, this is designed to go in the second joint of, sorry, wrong finger. <laughs> it's meant to go in the second joint of your finger, not, not the index finger. And it, I mean, does it make a big difference? Mm, I can't really see if if I feel any big difference. I think if I took the clip off and was holding it just the flat handles in my hand, um, would it add a degree of comfort? I don't know. And maybe if you were slicing all day, uh, would that flat, a uh, little bit of flat surface rub? Mm, maybe, maybe there's just a little teeny, maybe it's just a fine adjustment. Maybe it's a little teeny bit more comfortable. I don't know. I, I'm really trying to see, maybe a little, I don't know. Uh, it's it's an, uh, a subjective call, I think, up to every individual user. But my impression of it, I mean, it's a nice touch. I think it's, it shows attention to detail. And I think just holding it here as we film, as I film this video right now, maybe so. Maybe it has a teeny bit more comfort, just that little touch. And I'll, I'll reevaluate that uh, when I get my large 21 uh, back and I can, can sort of go back and forth from one to the other. Um, like I said about the grip, I mean, I haven't owned a plain handled one before. I'm always used to having the inlay and laying my fingers down on the inlay. Um, and I'll see as the sandblasting wears on this. Um, but right now I think if I was going on just smooth micarta, the micarta, smooth micarta would be less friction than on the sandblast. But I do, you do get the grip with the gap in the, in the current Sabenza 21 design of inlay. What it's going to be like with the big flat inlays, um, I don't know. Um, uh, I'll be curious if I ever get a chance to try one. Um, I don't think there's much more to say about the ergonomics because everything else is the same. I mean, like the, the curve on the, on the top of the handle, the curve on the bottom, uh, everything else is the same. And I, I actually held this up, um, with a, with a photo of a 21 in the background to compare, uh, to see if there was any change in these curves. And I don't think there, there is whatsoever. Um, now, uh, what's the most important thing is the slicing and the sharpening. Um, so I have some grocery receipts here. Now, Friday, when I did this, uh, when uh, I was filming the failed uh, unboxing video, it, it sliced right through, uh, and there it goes. It sliced right through receipt, uh, grocery receipt. That's not tearing, that's slicing. Um, so that's really sharp out of the box. And, um, I think I've said um, before that people, I've seen videos online of Sabenza 21s from like six, seven years ago and people said, oh, they don't come that sharp out of the box. My Sabenza 21 in single came very sharp out of the box. It could do that when it was brand new out of the box. My Nyala could do that right out of the box, uh, which I just got um, 
a month ago. And oh, look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's shaved a, a bend in the paper. So yeah, it's uh, it's not tearing, that's slicing. Um, so really sharp out of the box. Um, so no complaints there whatsoever. Um, good work guys in the grinding department, that's for sure. Um, I guess that's the highlight of the video is when you finally get to see it slice. Um, I think I've covered everything. Let me just give you a little last look around at all the surfaces. Um, I don't think I've, I've sort of steadily held it um, so you can see it bit by bit. I, although I've been moving it around in my hands for the last uh, hour here, almost. This video is almost an hour, I think. So I better wind it up. Um, but... Yeah, that's my first impressions, and that's my overview. Um, I hope it was informative, and I hope I didn't bore you with my personal stories, but I know in a few years I'll be coming back to this video and and experiencing sort of my first couple of days of owning a Sabenza 31, and, and I'll enjoy seeing it. So, um, um, yeah, uh, so like I said uh, before, if I missed anything in this video, um, you know, that you wanted me to give an impression of like, you know, comment and I'll try and answer it or I'll, I'll make a note. And when I do this, another video, say in a month where I have my large 21 to compare, I'll try and go back and answer any questions or, or show you any, any features that, um, that I didn't get to, or I forgot. I always forget something. Um, and, uh, being the, um, you know, the Canada one, uh, um, uh, 31, um, uh, Brandon suggested that I take it out for a Tim Hortons double, double. So once I get the lanyard on it, I'm going to take it around Ottawa, Canada's national capital and take a bunch of, uh, Canada theme specific photos. So thanks Brandon for that suggestion. Um, uh, I'll be doing that. Uh, and um, since this one is going to have a theme, uh, I'm going to put it out there to Rob, uh, who has the the traveling Sabenza that's traveling around all 50 states of the United States. I think it needs to make a visit uh, to Canada's national capital. Uh, I can take it around and show it the sites, and it can, ha and can hang out with the Canada 131. Uh, but um, I'll talk about that more once I actually get the Canada 131 dressed up with its its proper land lanyard etc um so um i hope you enjoyed uh the video i hope you found it informative i hope you have a great rest of the day and i hope you don't have to wait too long and you end up lucky in the lottery for for when you get your 31 sent to you thanks a lot have a great afternoon so long for now